Students interact with the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz through the Jazz in America program. The program brings jazz musicians and hip-hop artists to schools all around the country. We've been uh, out all, all week doing this. We were in Chicago on Monday, New Orleans on Tuesday, and now we're here today and tomorrow. Then they're going to L.A. on Friday. This is our third stop. We started in Chicago. All this week, we started in Chicago. We did uh, two assembly programs there. We went to New Orleans, did two assembly programs here. We'll be here in D.C. today and tomorrow doing, uh, we did Roosevelt today. We'll do Anacostia High School tomorrow. And then we fly out to Los Angeles and we do Washington Prep. Yeah, wow. yeah. At Theodore Roosevelt in Washington, D.C., students saw a program that exhibited the influence of jazz and blues on current hip hop. Part of the response that we get when we go to different schools has been really great, it's been really strong, and that's because we combine blues, we combine jazz, and hip-hop. And with all three of those elements, we're able to show to young people how improvisation is a thread amongst all three, and that's extremely important for them to realize, because a lot of young people today don't realize how much music deals with improvisation. And it's really important to realize if you do your homework and go back historically, you can find how it's been around. It's nothing really new. Jazz influences the hip-hop culture that young people know today in more ways than they might think. Yeah, I mean, like today, I mean, just working with them, I, you have to adapt. But it's easy to adapt when you're playing with a group of musicians that's been playing all their life. These cats is masters. Uh -huh. So, you know, to be able to do that, it, it, it's, it's very easy. And I mean, as far as incorporating it into my music, outside of working with them, I mean, half of the records that hip hop samples and the stuff that we chop up on our drum machines was all made by, you know, cats that was here before us. So it's incorporated throughout all of our music. Kenneth Dickerson, the music teacher at Roosevelt, says that programs like these are crucial for the success of his students. These young people here and young students here at Roosevelt are outstanding young people. They just need to be given a platform or an environment where they can nourish themselves right. and they need to be exposed. So when you bring people from the outside in, you know, and they're, they're exposed to something new, some kids have probably never heard jazz before, never heard blues. Right. And cross-curricular programs like these will continue to enhance the education of these and many other students. I was writing a story on locker security because there were a whole bunch of locker break-ins and I just walked up to this girl and because someone said she'd had her stuff broken into and so I walked up to her and I was like, um, I heard you had your locker broken into and you lost, a, she lost like a skateboard or something like that, something she really liked and it was expensive and I was like, I really, I'm writing an article for the Beacon about it, can I interview you? And she kind of looked at me and she was like, you're going to like put my story in like a paper in front of the whole school and I was like, yeah, and I was sort of about to see her say no and she just stood up and hugged me and it was, it was really cool because I think there's just a lot of kids who really wanted to be heard and it was a way for them to be able to share their, sto share their stories with the um, administration. I think they appreciate it. A newspaper and print can be way more powerful than than you would expect. It can it can really like change people's minds. It can really create awareness. And that's I've learned I've learned how powerful a newspaper that cannot be censored, that's not censored can be. I have like further improved my skills of like cooperating and like working with teachers um, who may not have the same point of view as you or other students. Um, it's really like down to the wire pressure at the last second, but it's enjoyable. I would say the beacon has made me more, I guess, brave. Like I, I feel more comfortable to be essentially in an uncomfortable situation. Um, I'm not as nervous. I don't feel like I can't stand up for myself. I don't think that I am the odd person out and I have nothing to say.
My favorite thing that we did with the vegan was the self-segregation spread. Um, amazing. It was, it was an amazing experience for me because I've talked about this problem with like my close friends, but it's not something that it's it's easy to talk about with people, with strangers, you know, other people in the school who I don't really know. And so this gave me the opportunity to do that um, along with like. Um, a few other writers who worked on the double truck as well. My first article actually, I interviewed Kaya Henderson, who is the new chancellor of uh, DC Public Schools for kids. And um, she pretty much, we, I interviewed her and asked her about what her position was because she was an interim uh, chancellor. Uh, she explained to me about what she was going to do with DCPS, how Wilson was coming along, how the building at Wilson was coming along. And um, I learned a lot from that, actually, because it was my first interview, and it was my first article. So I learned a lot from uh, interviewing Kai Henderson. I think the news stories are always very important, um, because obviously um, they, they capture, I think, a sense of the school. I think the feature stories are also just a whole bunch of fun. Um, coming up, we have stories about different clubs, and I think that the feature stories really show the character of the school. I brought Melanie a story that I wrote um, over the summer and I had her read it um, and she gave me some feedback on it and suggested a lot of places where I could send it. I was trying to freelance it and that was really helpful to have her advice on um, what sort of places might be interested in it and um, I'm still working on freelancing it but it was helpful to just have a professional journalist read it and she said it was very good and she gave me some feedback. It was really helpful. I think the beacon is expanding. Um, just looking at the beginning of this year when we had just a few writers writing for us and now looking at the wall, just the variety of writers, um, the different backgrounds that they come from. So I think number one, expanding our reporters, I think will be a big step forward and I think that's just going to continue. I would love the beacon to keep being the voice for the students and things that they want heard and they want people to know about. Um, I'd really like for it to be a force of change because I think it can be. It has, we've changed, we've widened the amount of people that read it definitely from going online and parents read it and parents stop me and ask me when it's coming out and people in the PTA and all of that. And so I think I'd like to see us sort of cover more issues that we think need to be brought to other people's attention and um, just keep getting it out there. It's relaxing. It helps you when you're sad, when you're emotional. It, it takes stress off you. It changes your emotion. Like whatever your emotion you're feeling or just something to just kind of like let yourself go. If you're mad and sad, you can get happy. Or if you want to stay mad, you can listen to something that make you stay mad. It is a way you express yourself. It is inspirational to me.
hip hop, R and B, go go, rock, gospel, uh, techno. Usually R and B. I like. Britney Spears, she does pop, and Lady Gaga. Um, gospel, R&B. R&B, rock, pop, gospel, reggae, jazz, so a lot. I like Gaga because the beats and the songs that they play. I like R&B because it's like explain, it explains you and what are you thinking. I listen to a lot of like Christian music just because like it's inspirational. I listen to hip hop, go go, gospel music. I listen to uh, rock. I like the Beatles because they're inspirational. I have a diverse selection of music because not one song sounds just good. Every song and every different genre has its own story. I only listen to like country, rock, R and B, and pop. Rock, hip hop, country, pop, R&B, jazz. R&B, rap, hip hop, mostly, but I'll usually listen to anything if it sounds good. I like the old music because it's like, oh, it brings back old memories like Martin Luther King. The message that I hear from R&B is usually talking about real life situations. There are different types of genres, there are different types of feelings and emotions behind the songs that are being created. All the music is just music. There's no race on music. Music speaks to everybody. And to just be yourself, not having anybody judge you because music is all different. <laughs> The lyrics, it speak to like a different part of me. I like the lyrics more than the rhythm. Like the rhythm, it could be a fast or a slow beat, I wouldn't care. But as long as they're talking about something that relates to me. The lyrics is more important to me because the lyrics is like poetry. Most songs express how I feel. So I listen to the lyrics more than the rhythm of the song. If you just listen to a beat, it wouldn't make sense. But sometimes you can relate to the lyrics inside the song. It's both, but I'm more like the rhythm than the lyrics. Sex trafficking is a modern day form of slavery in which a commercial sex act is induced by force, fraud, or coercion, or in which the person induced to perform such an act is under the age of 18 years. 27 million people are involved in modern-day slavery across the world. 70% of the female victims are trafficked into the commercial sex industry. Victims of trafficking are forced into various forms of commercial sexual exploitation, including prostitution, pornography, stripping, live sex shows, mail-order brides, military prostitution, and sex tourism. Victims trafficked into prostitution and pornography are usually involved in the most exploitive forms of commercial sex operations. Sex trafficking operations can be found in highly visible venues such as street prostitution, as well as in more underground systems such as closed brothels that operate out of residential homes. Sex trafficking also takes place in a variety of public and private locations such as in massage parlors, spas, strip clubs, and other fronts for prostitution. A few organizations of our nation's capital who help victims recover from sexual exploitation and abuse are Courtney's House, Bridge to Freedom Foundation, and Fair Fund. The Courtney's House initiative was started in August 2008 by Tina Front. 
So the reason I started Courtney Sounds is because I'm a survivor of child sex trafficking and it wasn't enough services for U.S. citizen children. Nearly 250,000 children are trafficked each year and there are just not enough services. Well, you know, teens in D.C. and around the country are definitely targeted. The average age of entry into prostitution is 11 to 14. Unfortunately, teens are easy to manipulate because they don't believe they're being manipulated. So it's really easy when there's an older guy dating you and then they trick you into forced prostitution. You don't even know that that's what they want. But we don't get federal funding. We actually work with about 42 churches now and two synagogues that support Courtney's House and foundations also supporting Shared Hope International is one of our funders as well. Uh, even though we're not faith-based, we have a lot of church partnerships. As the organization was getting ready for the holiday season, they provided gifts for all their recovering victims. And then today's also our community day over at the church right here who actually donated us this wonderful place. Community day means that we're kind of letting people know that we're in a neighborhood and providing services, having free wonderful food and clothes for everyone. Their services include group therapy such as art, dance, and yoga, survivor-led CSEC support groups, individual counseling or therapy, and intensive case management. Another organization in the D.C. area is the Bridge to Freedom Foundation, led and founded by Cassandra Clifford. Bridge to Freedom Foundation, we're a newer organization, so we've only been established technically within the past two years. Our two main programming uh, areas are personal and professional development. Our personal development program's core is self-image and self-worth. So we really work on the whole gamut of things going anywhere from health and nutrition basics, um, so positive snacking, how to eat um, just for your general health, and we, we work that in through different workshops um, that might be, especially when we're working with teen populations on foods that are good for your hair, skin, and nails, and ways that really relate to them to also doing positive body image, which can go anywhere from we'll do to various workshops. And we might help them find their personal image and style. Um, so it's kind of a dress for success with a what not to wear program kind of combined together with a BTFF flair. Try and focus on all, all of those areas and help them find themselves so that they can actually feel that they're worth something. BTFF's unique and individual focus seeks to move survivors past the point of survival and into a place where they can thrive. So D.C. is a real hub, it's a real transient city for human trafficking. So you do have girls from this area that are being trafficked. You also have international and other domestic victims that are all coming in. And there's definitely a heavy concentration in this city uh, as a problem. Um, unfortunately, there's no city that doesn't have a connection or issue associated with human trafficking. We've just seen two groups who offer significant support for recovering victims. The need for more funding and more organizations to help stop modern-day slavery is imperative. This is Martine Gaetan reporting for School Without Walls News.